Hi everyone, I am so excited for our video for today because I have some new brushes with me and they are actually the big Kiaki Minis from Sonya G. Look at that, look how pretty they look. And um, before we continue with today's video, I would like to give a huge thank you to Sonya G and Beautylish for sending these babies my way. I am so grateful and I'm so excited to try them out today. Now, these two brushes are not entirely new to the Sonya G line, but they are like, um, like you know, a reiteration to the Niji Pro and the Buffer Pro, which is currently in the permanent line of Sonya G. So um, I think there are a few differences, like, you know, nuances in the brush head design here, and we'll talk about that intimately um, later in the video, okay? So um, what we have here is the Mini Kiyaki Niji and the Mini Kiyaki Buffer. So um, basically, they are, like, you know, an additional to the Mini Kiyaki collection of Sonya G, especially if you're someone who has been collecting, like, you know, her Mini Kiyaki limited edition releases. And if I just add them side by side to the other Mini Kiyaki brushes that I have in her collection, it creates a very robust makeup brush collection, especially if you include the um, ho Traditions Holiday Trio. I hope I got the name right. Um, because they just create a very nice, like, you know, brush set that you can use, um, like, you know, for, uh, pa not only for powder and eyeshadows, but, like, you know, even for bronzers and finishing powders, contouring, things like that. So, um, I wish I was able to uh, purchase the first Mini Kiyaki Limited Edition release, but as I've, but as I've said before, um, I couldn't get that because um, there's a spending cap for me in Beautylish um, for customers here in the Philippines. So, um, that's the reason why I let go of that. But, like, you know, just... Looking back, uh, like, you know, thinking of the picture of the first Mini Kiyaki uh, limited edition release and, you know, having it here and adding it here into this collection, it's going to be a very perfect, um, like, not only, like I said, travel brush set, but it's going to be a perfect um, brush range um, that you can use. Like, I mean, like, if you have that, um, you don't need to buy any other brushes at all because you can really have a very, like, you know, robust collection that you can use in more ways than one. Because after all, that's a trademark of Sonya G brushes. You can use them in more ways than one. Now, um, you can actually purchase these brushes individually. So the Mini Kiyaki Niji here retails for $85. And the Mini Kiyaki Buffer here retails for $75. Now, the prices of these two brushes is the same as those of the permanent line. The Niji Pro also retails for $85. And the Buffer Pro retails for $75. So it doesn't really matter if the designs of the brushes here, um, especially with the handles, are different. They have the same prices. Now, the only thing that's like, you know, the problem these days is that the Niji Pro and the Buffer Pro is currently unavailable. So it's out of stock. So if you are very impatient and if you can't wait, I think getting these two at this time is a nice um, alternative to those two. But there's just like, you know, again, a slight difference between those brushes and these brushes that we have with us today. Now, the brush handle design on these two brushes is very consistent with the other brushes from the Mini Kiyaki collection, wherein, of course, the handle is made using Kiyaki wood, and you still have this very nice, like, you know, red tone brown lacquering on the handle. Very beautiful. You still have the Sonya G stamping here, and of course, at the back, you see the names of the brushes and the Japan stamp, and the ferrules here are in a nice matte black color and again it's so very very pretty very elegant and they have a substantial weight to them i have to say especially the mini kiyaki um, niji very very it's quite heavy and um you have to be very careful with this, especially if you like air drying your brushes at the edge of the table. The Mini Kiyaki Niji is top heavy, especially in this part. So um, it has a tendency of tipping over, which is also the same case with the Niji Pro. So just be very careful on how you attain like, you know, the balance at the edge of the table. Just find its um, center of gravity. And that also goes the same for the Mini Kiyaki Buffer. It's still quite heavy, but it's not as heavy the, as the Mini Kiyaki Niji. But still, you have to be careful on how you uh, put this at the edge of the table when you air dry it, okay? Because it has a tendency of tipping over. Now, um, these two brushes actually uses Psycho Goat hairs 
for their brush head. So we all know by now that Taiko Gold hair is actually very, very soft. And we can see that the brush heads are also dyed. So we all know by now that once a brush head is dyed, it adds strength into the core of the um, individual fibers of the hair. So in just me saying that, we can actually use these brushes for, you know, hard pressed powders, like, you know, powder foundation. It's good to use. Big jelly bronzers, big jelly brushes, blushes. So um, any of those types of, like, you know, stubborn um, powder formulas that you find very difficult to pick up and use on your face. Now, also one other thing, if you have sensitive skin, this is a good brush to use because, again, this is made of psycho goat hair, which um, is very nice to use for people who cannot, like, you know, really use, like, Sokoho goat hairs or, like, even, like, um, synthetic uh, fibers on brush heads. So, again, they're very, very soft, as you guys can see how well they dance on the face and just how well it, like, you know, cups the planes of my face. Look at that. Look how soft that is. Very, very elegant looking. <laughs> very, very luxurious feeling as well. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be talking about these brushes individually, okay? All right, so the Mini Kiyaki Buffer is like the Buffer Pro from Sonya G from the Permanent line. So as you guys can see, uh, they're almost the same, but they're slightly different because I think um, these two brushes are made by different manufacturers. So the Mini Kiyaki Buffer will look smaller than the Buffer Pro, especially if we compare it with the length of the handle. But they're actually the same, especially if you look at the brush heads here, side by side. But the main difference that I have noticed is that the ferrules here are very different, wherein the Mini Kiyaki Buffer has a matte ferrule, and the Buffer Pro has a glossier ferrule design. And speaking of ferrules, I have also seen that there's a slight difference between the ferrule designs here, where in the Buffer Pro here, it actually blooms in a much more different way because I think there's a difference in the crimp here. Because as you guys can see, um, the blooming of the Buffer Pro here, it kind of blooms inward into the tips, while the blooming of the Mini Kiyaki Buffer here kind of blooms outwards to the tips. And that's also maybe the reason why the Mini Kiyaki Buffer here has a much more flatter looking top than the Buffer Pro because the Buffer Pro here has rounder top than the Mini Kiyaki Buffer. And also one other thing that I have noticed is that there's a slight difference in the color of the brush head here wherein there are darker uh, brown colors here near the tips of the Mini Kiyaki Buffer while here on the Buffer Pro it's like the same color all throughout. Now, um, in terms of brush head design, if we put it like this, we can see that both of them are quite round. And although the edges here of the Mini Kiyaki Buffer, it flares out a little bit more. So um, that's the main difference. But then again, I haven't um, put this out um, like, you know, in a long time and then been kept in a brush net. So maybe that's why um, it hasn't bloomed um, as wide as the Mini Kiyaki Buffer. But I'm sure if I wet this and I air dry this, it's going to be, this will bloom out more into its, like, you know, actual shape. But um, I think that these brushes are the same. And even, like, you know, the total circumference of the brush head, because if we just press both of them together like this, they actually, like, you know, they have the same circumference. Look at that. So they're actually, like, you know, there's, they're the same brush with a slight minor difference. So uh, I think they're like, if I were to compare them to a person, they're like twins, but maybe four minutes apart or something like that. So that's the main difference that I, like, you know, see between these two. Now, in terms of, like, you know, strength of the brush heads, let me just you know, switch to the other side. Okay, let me just put them together. Okay, if I press them here on my palm, they actually feel the same. And as you guys can see, they actually also move the same. So it's actually quite amazing that even if these brushes are made by different brush manufacturing companies, they kind of work like, you know, identically. It's actually quite amazing. Look how they move together. So that's actually quite good in my book because even if they are slightly different, they're still, you know, roughly the same. Okay, so out of curiosity, let me just put the smooth buffer here so that we can just have um, a comparison of like you know the brush head length and the brush head design and also the color of the dye on the brush head so um, again the smooth buffer here will have a much more targeted approach 
and it will actually like you know be useful to use um, for smaller areas on the face than in comparison to these two. But then again, I love the smooth buffer. I, lose, I also love the Buffer Pro and to have the Mini Kiyaki Buffer is actually nice because at least I have now two of these types of um, brushes that I actually like. You know, it's one of my go-to brushes that I pick up all the time. All right, and now let's talk about the Mini Kiyaki Niji. And of course, we're going to compare it to the Niji Pro. And I'm sure as you guys can see right now, the main difference that we have between these two brushes is the color of the dye used on the brush head, where in the Mini Kiyaki Niji uses brown dye. And on the Niji Pro, it has like, you know, a mix of undyed and dyed black psycho goat hair so um in terms of brush head design both of these brushes look very similar to each other like you know especially if you put this this way and if i put it on top of each other they almost bloom the same way so that means the sizes are the same but there i think there's just a slight difference and i can see that the niji pro here it blooms inward while the Mini Kiyaki Niji here blooms outward. And I think it is this difference in the way that they bloom outward. They create this difference in like, you know, brush head design, especially here on the side, where in the Niji Pro here has a much more denser and compact tip, while the Mini Kiyaki Niji here has a much more fluffier and airier tip. So that's the main difference that I can see between these two, but they're practically almost the same. But it's just like a difference in the airiness and the fluffiness. And I think in just like, you know, by saying this comparison, this will have a much more targeted application of color. But this one will also give a targeted application of color. But it's going to be much more softer because of the airiness. See, can you see the difference in the how plush, the difference in their plushness? Look at that. So they're like the same brush, but they're also different. So they're like... It's like having fraternal twins, if you know what I mean, <laughs> if I could compare it to. Now, in terms of softness, I can say that the Mini Kiyaki Niji is like really, really, like, you know, it feels very soft here at the palm of my hands when I'm doing this. There's a nice snap back into position. Like, you know, as you guys can see that there's a, there's a strength into the core there, which I'm sure can add, like, you know, this is the ability that can create a targeted application of color into the cheeks. And I can also say that um, it also goes the same for the Niji Pro, but the Niji Pro has more resilience. Can you see that? Just like how the way it goes back and forth here on my palms. So um, the, oh, oops. So they almost act the same way, but one is just softer than the other. So if you're thinking, like, you know, oh, I think the Niji Pro is just too big for me. And if you think that the Mini Kiyaki Niji is smaller than the Niji Pro, I think you are um, in for a surprise because the Mini Kiyaki Niji is actually fluffier than the Niji Pro. But um, if there's one other brush that I would like to compare this to, it's actually, hang on, let me get it. It's actually the Jumbo Worker Brush. And... Um, Hang on, I think I'm just going to mount it because it's going to be a little bit difficult to maneuver all three brushes together on my fingertips. Hang on. But if there's one thing that I have noticed with the Mini Kiyaki Niji, if I just put it here on the side and if I put the Niji Pro right beside that, let me just angle this properly, okay. And if we put the Jumbo Bronzer right beside that, okay, we can see how fluffy the Mini Kiyaki Niji is here on the side, even to the point wherein it looks very similar to the Jumbo Bronzer in terms of fluffiness here. Because the Niji Pro, it's not as fluffy and as airy as these two brushes. So if the Jumbo Bronzer and the Niji Pro had a baby, it would be the Mini Kiyaki Niji. So yeah, those are the slight differences that I have noticed, like, you know, with the Mini Kiyaki Niji and with the Mini Kiyaki Buffer, especially, like, you know, when I was comparing this to its, like, you know, counterparts in the permanent line from Sonia G. So it's actually quite interesting to have, like, you know, 
brushes with slight differences, like, although they're almost the same, but they're a little bit different as well. Now, um, before we continue with this video, um, I do have to say though that these two brushes were not made in Kumano Hiroshima, Japan, because if we take a look at the plastic packaging of both these brushes, there's no Kumano Fuda seal in them, so this must have been made elsewhere uh, maybe in kawajiri so um, we're not too sure yet but that's just speculation on my part but again it's no big deal because after all there is still both handmade in japan all right so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to add some foundation into my face and then maybe some concealer things like that and let's try to see how these two brushes are going to work with us today Okay, so I have some foundation and some concealer and some powder down. And as you guys can see, I use some of the brushes from the, like, you know, previous mini Kiyaki sets. And of course, one brush from the Traditions Holiday Trio. And although at this point, because I'm actually, like, you know, setting my face with some powder, I could have uh, used this. But um, I decided not to because I wanted to show you guys the other thing that I actually like using, especially the Buffer Pro. Um, I actually like using it for like, you know, powder foundations, like, you know, this MAC Studio Fix. Look how much I love this color. And although um, I have not shown you that I actually used like, you know, the Buffer Pro for like, you know, applying um, powder foundation, but as I have started using the Buffer Pro and integrating it into my, like, you know, makeup routine, especially after I bought it, like, you know, um, in Jan 2022, I think. Um, I have used, I have loved using the Buffer Pro for powder foundations. And I'll try to see if um, the Mini Kiyaki Buffer will actually do that for us today as well. So what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm just swirling the brush here on the pan here oh look at how much fluff that just created so again we know that this is actually a very strong brush and we can see that this is how much product this brush head collects and let's try to see how well this will apply on um, this powder foundation on the face so i'm just using a tapping motion and i'm just pressing the product into my face and then I'm just gonna use like you know circular buffing motions just to spread it out and just to even out the application and as you guys can see it's created a very matte look on my face right now and again I really love how well this actually like you know splays on the face again it doesn't splay out too much but it just splays out enough wherein you're actually able to apply the product and then like you know the edges here is actually able to spread it out because that's also one thing that's important when you are using like you know brushes for applying like you know powder foundations especially if you're trying to build coverage that's like you know the type of brush that you actually need because again if you're building coverage you need to do it evenly like you know even with a beauty blender you always use like a tapping motion and you just like, you know tap 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 because sometimes like you know applying um like you know product in one go using a very big brush doesn't achieve that so at least by using brush heads of this size it's actually able to apply and blend out product nicely and effortlessly so look at that it's a very even application very nice and very perfect no patchiness, nothing whatsoever. And then look how much, like, you know, product was actually, like, you know, removed from the brush head and delivered into the face. So the brush head here doesn't really, like, you know, cling to a lot of, like, you know, product, especially with, like, you know, this type of a, a very thick kind of a powder foundation um, formula. All right, so let me just do my other side now so that we have a much more even. coverage on my skin. 
So I'm actually quite happy to say that like you know with the buffer pro and like you know the mini kiakin buffer they work very similarly to each other even if there's like you know slight difference in the brush head design so which is actually great because I really love using the buffer pro especially like you know when I'm building um, coverage on the face and when I'm using like example um, you know when you're working with someone and they have like very textured skin and you have to use like you know thicker um, coverage foundations like you know even like creams or like you know those liquid types of foundations wherein um, you know it, there's a certain type of dry down that it has to undergo before you can actually add powder on top and you know sometimes I've noticed that if I use the wrong brush um, I am able to lift those types of foundations from the skin and what's so amazing with the like you know with the buffer pro and I'm sure with the mini kiaki buffer it's also going to act the same wherein it doesn't actually disturb the like you know layer of foundation that you have applied and it doesn't even lift the formula from the face which is actually amazing because um that's also one reason why i don't use the um, beauty blenders much because sometimes when i'm using let's say a you know essay lauder double wear um, foundation and if i'm speeding through the makeup application process and i just keep on tapping and there's a certain time frame when the essay lauder uh, double wear dries down and I'm actually able to, the Beauty Blender actually like, you know, lifts the foundation from the skin and I end up having patches on the face. And it's actually very difficult to layer on the Essay Lauder, um, like, you know, double wear foundation. And I find that if I use like either the Buffer Pro and I'm sure with the Mini Kiaki Buffer, that doesn't happen at all. All right, so look at that. So my skin is now a little bit matter, but it doesn't remove the nice natural glow on my skin which is actually perfect and I like it that way because after all sometimes if you use like you know the wrong brush you lose this luminosity the natural luminosity of the skin and truthfully like you know if with a brush like this in the application process like this you don't even need to add highlights anymore because your skin is actually doing the job already and mind you I just used foundation concealer and powder and like you know powder foundation and that's just basically it so again we have this very nice like you know even coverage it doesn't look cakey it doesn't look thick but it looks like you know very even and very um, like you know well balanced application on the face and of course you can use like the mini kiaki buffer for like you know applying finishing powders on the face now I would like to try to use this color because I think this like you know finishing powder from this palette from Hourglass is actually an amazing color and it will work very nicely on my skin and as you guys can see it's already applying a very nice warmth into my skin a very nice peachy tone to it and it's adding a very nice dimension of color very even very easy and it's actually blending out the color in no time so how amazing is that what do you guys think let me add a hint of that here on my forehead. Now, as I said in my Buffer Pro um, review, um, I love the sizes of brush heads like this because it fits easily into like, you know, smaller pans like this. So you can just pick up whatever color that you need and you have a concentration of the color here in the middle. And because it's a little bit like, you know, arched here, so as soon as it lands on the face, it sinks a little bit and it evens itself out. Um, on the skin so it makes it like you know, that's why it's very you have this very nice like you know even application of color a nice buffing out of color as well and of course it would be like you know if you have um, like you know finishing powders of sizes like this again they fit very well and very nicely and if you just do this you get like you know a very nice pickup of color very even very light and you can even like use this in the under eye area especially like you know, if you're not very if you're not being very specific with your application you can just do that and look at that very nice and very easy again very even and like you know you can apply it in no time so yeah just like the buffer pro from Sonya G I can use the mini kiaki buffer for finishing powders and um one other thing hang on let me just go get it and let me come back because I'm such a fan of the Guerlain Meteorites. Let me just, you know, get one of these colors here. So this is the color Doré. And the brush head here fits very nicely into the tin here. 
and as you guys can see the powder is breaking up and you can see it flying in the air and it adds a very nice hint of color again very perfect look at that very nice like you know even application of color and again like you know this is how much it picks up and I'm just going to add a little bit of that here on the cheeks so that you guys can see how effective and nice the buffer brushes from Sonya G actually work. Look at that. Amazing, right? So especially if you are like, you know, someone who has overdone your powder application on your skin. And if you want to apply a hint of radiance and color using finishing powders and if you are quite scared of using the wrong brush because after all sometimes if you apply too much finishing powders you look sweaty and not dewy and luminous at all so the mini kiyaki buffer or even the buffer pro will really work in applying you know a very nice even amount of color and product on the face without necessarily looking cakey because sometimes I do have to say that if you add too much finishing powder, um, you can look cakey very, very fast. And also one other thing, if you are someone who likes to have a nice, like, you know, flush of color into the cheeks, you can also use this type of a brush for blush application. So I have here um, one of my... Um, What's the name of this? So this is the Pink Pearl Meteorite that I got a few years back. So I really scoured the internet for this because I wasn't able to get this here. And we're going to pick up a very minute hint of um, product. And we're just going to apply this on the cheeks just to give us a very nice flush of color. Look at that. Look how even it applies color. Look how amazing that is. You know, no patchiness, not, no disturbance of whatever product that you applied underneath. Such an amazing brush. Like, you know, I think the Buffer Pro and even, like, you know, in this Mini Kiyaki Buffer, it's one of the nicest brush that Sonya G has ever developed. And you have to have one of this in your collection. And look at that. So this is how the Mini Kiyaki Buffer applies powder foundation and finishing powders on the face. Very nice, right? Very even, very soft, and very delicate. All right, so now let's start using the Mini Kiyaki Niji and let's apply some bronzer now. So let me try using maybe this City Bronzer from Maybelline and I'm just going to tap it here on the pan. And let's see how well this will apply color. And just like, you know, the Niji Pro, it really does apply in a much more targeted fashion on the cheeks. And it plays out quite nicely on the face. So that already, like, you know, blends out the color quite nicely. So again, it's just a very nice, like, you know, targeted kind of um, bronzer application. But I do have to say that I think because the brush head here is airier in comparison to that of the Niji Pro, you will actually deliver a much more softer bronzer application on the face. It's still targeted, but it's not as targeted as the Niji Pro. Look at that again, very nice and very well blended. You can already see some of the warmth coming out here. So let me just add a hint of this here on my neck. You can also use this if you want to apply like you know very bronzing kind of an effect here on your jawline even if i don't need it <laughs> and some here so very very interesting so that's a slight difference that i have noticed like you know with this with the application of the color with the mini kiyaki niji to that of the um, niji pro so if you're interested by the way um, i can put a link down on the description box to so my full review for the niji pro and also for the um, buffer pro from sonya g so that you know i'm not going to sound repetitive in this video when i am talking about these brushes now i think you can also use this brush to apply like you know a nice hint of powder all over the face so let me just you know 
dry clean the brush head here first. So I have applied some translucent powder here on the brush head and I'm just going to buff it here on the microfiber towel on my table just to remove the bronzer color. And let me just apply a hint of translucent powder here on my teasel where I'm usually like, you know, very, very oily. Because again, this brush is touted as part of like, you know, a travel set because after all, they're smaller, mini sizes. So you cannot bring a lot of brushes when you with you when you are traveling. So you have to have a brush that can actually work in more ways than one. And just like that, as you guys can see, the mini Kiyaki Niji has actually applied a very nice, well-balanced amount of translucent loose powder on the face. So at least we know that we can actually use this for that. And one other thing, hang on. I'm actually quite curious on how this will apply, like, you know, a much more deeper type of, you know, powder foundation on the face because I have not used the Niji Pro yet with a, like, you know, powder foundation. So I have here a deeper shade of my MAC Studio Fix and I'm going to use the Mini Kiyaki Niji. And let's try to see if this brush can actually apply a nice, like, you know, very well blended amount of color into the skin, especially if you're someone who likes to use powder foundations, like, you know, to add warmth and, like, you know, bronzing, contouring kind of a thing on the face. Ooh, look at that. It applied a very nice, well blended color on the face, and it's just adding a hint of warmth into my skin. No shimmer, nothing whatsoever. And the thing is when you're using like you know very matte powders or very matte foundations in powder form, um, it's actually very difficult to blend them out because like you know there's no shimmers in them that can actually um, trick the eye in thinking that everything is already like you know being diffused in a specific area. So I am very happy to say that the Mini Kiyakiniji was actually able to add a very nice like you know well blended and diffused amount of color of this powder foundation on the skin. So this is actually quite perfect. Look at that. I'm very happy that I was actually able to do this experiment with you guys today. So let me just add a hint of color here on my nose. <laughs> just hit my eye. Ow. Okay, so let me just continue building some color there on the sides of my nose so that we have a very, you know, slight hint of contouring there. All right, so I think this is my vlog for today. Um, so this is how I plan to use my mini kiyaki buffer and my mini kiyaki niji and i'm very happy on how they actually like you know worked with me today and with the products that i have in my collection and also with my makeup sentiments so i hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog and if you have any more questions about how i decide to use the mini kiyaki buffer and the mini kiyaki niji and any other products that i use today please leave them down in the comments box and let's have a conversation about it all right so i'm gonna let you guys go now thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here and i hope that you're having a good day wherever you are bye